you mentioned uh, just at the beginning, Tara, that, well, you know, you had 24 uh, boys and one girl in this class, and you started to dive a little bit deeper, and that kind of led you to the creation of this book. So maybe you can tell us a little bit more about what did you discover? Like, what kind of biases uh, caused that type of shift and that change? Definitely. Um, so there were a few things. So when I started to get into like the actual book base, like research into, okay, what is the history of computer science and women, right? Um, there's Grace Hopper, of course, but like what has there been since then? And um, as I started to read and read and read and just take the information in, I was like, whoa, 1984, when I was one year old, that's when everything changed. <laughs> like, <laughs> and in 1984, you're seeing an uptick in, um, let's see, movies where the woman is the damsel in, in distress. You're seeing an uptick in video games where the woman is the damsel in distress. Um, you know, you've got Wonder Woman, but nine times out of 10, you're always seeing these males in these roles in media. And um, when it came to the video game aspect too, like, I mean, no offense, Mar Mario and Luigi, but like, <laughs> come on, can we get some, true. like. <laughs> you hit it right on the nail here. Right, like, like, I mean, I grew up with those this, games. There's always this role, like, it's built into our games, it's built into right. our society and into our movies. And so it's hard to, like, when you see that, that kind of forms your view of what the world should be. It's like in Mario and in Mario and Luigi, from what I uh, recall from those early years, it was like, okay, save the princess. Like, wait, what? And then like you see Hollywood and it's like, oh, save the girl. Or like, it's got to be the hot girl and like all this. And it's like, well, what about our brains, you know? And so <laughs> um, when I started to like, you know, read back into just things that had happened over time that caused all of this to, to change and also reflect on my experiences in growing up, you know, and not seeing role models in front of me of successful women in the field, right? Or um, that are broadcasted on a daily basis. Like when I was in high school, Mark Zuckerberg invented Facebook, you know? And it's like, oh, okay, white guy, Facebook. All right, what about these other tech companies that I use their products? Like, Who's behind them? Um, who, what impressions are left on what's developed based on who's building them, right? Because when we talk about programs being built, the person building them leaves an imprint on what they build, right? And so if the people that are building these tools that we use are white males, then there's going to be an, a diversity issue. There's going to be an equity issue because empathy can only take you but so far. You need to have a team of diverse individuals that are developing these tools, right? And so, but in order to create that diversity on tech teams nowadays, our students and children need to be able to see themselves and the potential of technology in their futures. Right. And like, I mean, I feel like important. Point. Like, so who should be those who should be those models, uh, Taro? Who would you suggest like are, are good role models that people we, we should be highlighting uh, in schools to get girls like to think that, yeah, this, this is totally possible. These are people that I could look up to. So, well, Google had this site, um, which was killed the other year. Um, it happens, but um, it was called Made with Code. And it doesn't exist anymore. Um, but what was nice about the site is that there were two three-minute long videos that were really fun and uppity, um, but that showed diverse women doing amazing things with computer science. And one that comes to mind right away is Daniel Feinberg. Um, she works with Pixar Films. So... And if you Google her um, or if you like put her name on YouTube, um, you'll probably come up with the video. But what was nice about that was, okay, young girls especially, they're watching these animated films, right? And like, you know, they're seeing this really cool stuff going on. And maybe there's like a little inkling in them that's like, I wonder how that's made. 
one of the most inspiring things about Danielle Feinberg, and she actually um, spoke at ISTE a few years ago, if I recall That's correctly. That's why I, think a, I recall hearing right? her talk at ISTE. I was yeah. like, this is such a great talk. We need more people like her. But that was awesome that you mentioned yeah. her. I, like, cause I think I was like... Me, it came to mind. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to like remember that ISTE exactly. I think that I was like in a balcony that was like not in the main like um, main stage area. But I was like in the up balcony and like it was quiet, but there were like the TVs and I saw her and I was like oh my gosh it's her it's like really her um but the really cool thing about her is that she's really like down to earth and um she shows how technology and computer science come together in making animation and the cool thing about this is that when girls see that and when they see somebody who looks like them talking about their cool job in the tech world which is actually making animated movies, they're like, whoa, the connections start to form and they start to make these links and then they start to explore. So we need to be exposing girls to more examples of girls who are doing, girls and women who are doing these really cool things in tech. And one of the nice, um, before I forget it, kind of segues into that. So Khan Academy, which is a free resource, um, has a whole animation curriculum for free that if students want to learn about animation and computer science, they can teach themselves on Khan Academy. So it's not something where like a new software has to be purchased or you've got to spend or invest a lot of money. Time, yes. Money, not so much. So uh, I'm going to put uh, Danielle Feinberg, uh, F-I-E-N-B-E-R-G in, in the chat. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just wanted to, like, before we move on, highlight that we've got some uh, some of our regulars here. Uh, I want to say hi to to Alice. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, Edna says uh, hello as well. She's joining us as well. Uh, and she said it's, it's good to be here. So we appreciate appreciate you, uh, Edna. Um, and I had a, a question come up from um, Steph, and she's saying, uh, my son's into tech and video games, but has gone physically inactive, not really wanting to move anymore. Any suggestions of how we get them to, to, to not be so slothful in terms of the movement? So it depends on the video games. There's a lot of really fun fitness games that are out there, um, you know, and they're on commercials, but it also depends on like your gaming system. What I would say is, well, you can't really April Fool's it anymore because April Fool's is already passed. Um, depends on your son's age also, but maybe slowly start to swap out some of the games that are currently there with fitness games, with games that require your child to actually get up and move around because they do exist. Um, and it really, it depends on if you're Wii or PlayStation or Switch, like it, it varies based on the platform, but they definitely exist on all platforms. That's a really, uh, really great point. Like that's a good way to, to get started. And there's so many, like even games that you can play on your mobile that are kind of get you outside and get you moving as well. So mm -hmm. thanks for suggesting that. It's a great one. <laughs> Yeah, like I play fit. Well, speaking of mobile, I play like Fitbit. Um, they have the bingo challenge, which is like really basic, but I'm a bingo fan. Um, and then there's another app that's connected with Fitbit that is called, uh, what is it called? It's something about like a bunny race. Oh, um, get fit bunny. And so every time I get a certain number of steps, I earn a certain number more moves to go towards solving like a candy crush type of puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. fun. 